So I had released a video uh, maybe a day or so ago called, What Do I Do With This Damn Book? And as I was telling that story in the video, it reminded me of another letter I had received from a woman, different woman. But in my mind, I kind of equate the two because they seem very familiar and very similar. So I thought, I'll, I'll repeat this to you. So I don't think I've told the story anywhere. No, I'm almost positive I haven't told the story in an article or any other video. So this is a psychic that I didn't know much about. Her name is Echo Bodine. And um, I had a bit of an exchange with her. And I think it's interesting. So I'm going to try to tell this in chronological order so that it makes some sort of sense, even though things kind of happened out of chronological order. <laughs> But I'll try to put it back into a box so that you can understand what happened. So in February, um, the date was the 26th, 2019, the New York Times published an article about Operation Pizza Roll and Operation Peach Pit. And these were these were two stings that were done on two different psychics on two different coasts one east coast one west coast and one was matt frazier and one was thomas john it's the first time i've ever had any interaction with thomas john didn't know who he was before we did operation pizza roll okay so this published in the new york times it took a long time for from the time that i did the sting operation pizza roll like in 2018 to the time that it got published in february of 2019 I will include a link to that in the description of this video. Fine. That was February 26, 2019. On February 27th, the next day, this psychic called Echo Bodine published a blog article. And it doesn't have any comments, and it's probably been read by about five people. But she puts out this article, and I don't see it for a year or more because my name is not actually mentioned in it so google alerts aren't going to pull up my name and i wasn't really looking for um you know this 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 article to come out when when the new york times publishes an expose and it mentions you multiple times um there is you have no life for weeks because that was all i could do to keep from having people, people were constantly contacting me, telling me, you know, great job. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, that was amazing. And that kind of thing. So whenever that happens, you, you just don't notice a lot of other things that are happening. So let's go to this article that she wrote, and I'm just going to touch on it briefly, because it's going to make sense a little bit later on when I tell you about this letter I received from this other, this other mother. Let me share that. Okay, so um, I will put this a link to this also in the comments of the YouTube description. So this one is, as I said, it was published the day after the uh, article printed in the New York Times. And this is Echo Bodine's blog, and she's calling it Celebrity Psychics. Now, she is a friend of Thomas John, the seatbelt psychic guy. And Thomas John knew the New York Times article was coming out because he was interviewed for the New York Times article. And it took months from the time we were interviewed to the time it came out. So he he knew fully well it was going to come out. So he had time to tell his friends that there was going to be this article on him in the New York Times. He just didn't know when or really what it was going to say. I mean, he had an inkling, but that he didn't have the exact you know knowledge of everything he knew he was caught in the sting and because the reporter jack hit described it to him that's the first time thomas john knew he had been caught in the sting was whenever the reporter reached out to him that must have been really interesting anyway i digress as i often do so i'm just going to read bits of this 
Um, I sit here stewing about recent comments I've heard about celebrity psychics. I guess some woman at the New York Times wrote a scathing article about celebrity psychics, mainly attacking my friend Thomas John, and John Oliver has a nasty YouTube video about us. So when, when the New York Times article came out, that same week, John Oliver had released a video um, on his very popular channel about psychics. And he used a phrase, it wasn't grief vampire, which is something Mark Edward and I always say. He said something about uh, grief vultures or something like that. And I didn't know about the John Oliver uh, video. It was just a coincidence that they came out at the same time. It was really interesting because a lot of people thought I must have had something to do with that John Oliver video because it was really powerful and it was slamming the psychic industry and people who are grief vampires. It didn't mention Thomas John at all. So in Bodine's Echo Bodine's blog here, she says that some woman at the New York Times wrote a scathing article. I am sure that Jack Hitt is not a woman at the New York Times. He's a reporter, freelance reporter, and he had an article for the New York Times. Or if she's talking about me, I didn't write no article. I didn't write it. I didn't get to read it before it got out. I just interviewed for it. Okay, so that's wrong. Um, here's what she says. They send in fake people and set up fake Facebook accounts, hoping to catch Thomas in lies. Well, we did. We 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 caught him in spades, like crazy. We caught him. Yeah, we did. So we didn't, you know, there was nothing that was hoping. We caught him. And you can read that in the article. She says, they set out with a premise of lies and then claim he's the one lying. Okay. Whew. He did lie. He read the he read the Facebook pages back to us that we had no contact with. All right. Did she go back? I'm going back to um Echo. Did she interview Thomas and ask him about how this works? Well, she, whoever the she is, it's not me because I'm not writing the article. And no, uh Jack did interview him. And asking him how it works. Well, we know how it works. He looked up the Facebook pages that were for myself and Mark Edward that we had no contact with. And he read them off and didn't see our real dead family members. But he only, anyway. Did she have a session herself? Well, if she's talking about Jack Hitt, the reporter, who is still not a she, um, no, he didn't have a, a session, but Susan Kerbick, who I think is who she's talking about, did have a session. I'm sitting there having the session with Thomas John, and Mark Edward is sitting next to me having a session with Thomas John, and Thomas John is reading the fake Facebook pages back to us. He's not telling us the real people who would have been there if he was contacting the dead so yeah that is a session he just blew it but no okay back to um echo she says did john oliver or any of these other people who claim psychics are fraud have a session with james von Prague, john edward suzanne geisman thomas john or john holland to mention a few of the very gifted celebrity psychics out there. These people do phenomenal work and I would, and would never entertain the thought of scamming someone. <laughs> okay. Sean Oliver is John Oliver. I don't know what he did. I don't know what research he did ahead of time. And it's, I, I don't know. Um, and all these other people who claim psychics are frauds, it should, we should have to have a session with them. I get that every once in a while. Well, why don't you have a session with them? It's like, well, that's not how it works. Just having a session with them. It, anyway, she's clueless. 
They do phenomenal work and they would never entertain the thought of scamming someone. Wow. Okay. Wait till I get to this next story. So uh, <laughs> anyway, she says, uh, she goes on to say, and I'll, I'll let you, I'll put it in the description, this link. Well, she says she's got a tough skin and she knows that people who um, are these gifted psychics have tough skin. So, all right. Um, here's the article that I will link to. And this is the Thomas John and the Matt Frazier article that was in New York, New York Times. And I'm giving you a archival link because it is the New York Times and you need to have a subscription if you're going to read it. But I'm giving you the archival link. And this is written in February 26, 2019. And it's quite detailed. And there are links and so on. So it's a wonderful article written by Jack Hitt. Uh, as I said, I'll put that in this, I'll put that in the notes. Okay. All right. So that's the background. You guys got all that. So now I'm not going to show you these screenshots because I don't want to reveal who the person is who, who sent me this um, email or Facebook post or whatever it was. I get a lot of Facebook posts, uh, Facebook uh, private messages. And it's a great way of getting a hold of me, by the way. So this was sent to me November 9th, 2020. So that was about three years ago now. Yeah, 2023. Yeah, because I'm speaking to you now from um, October 11th, 2023. So this was sent a year and a half. No, a, a year, 2020, yeah. A year and a half from the time the um, um, Operation Pizza Roll. Yeah, because November 2020 and Operation Pizza Roll was, was printed in the New York Times in February of 2019. So yeah, okay. A little more than 18 months. This, this, this makes sense in a minute, okay? Just bear with me, all right? So I'm going to paraphrase, I'll read bunches of this, but I'm going to change some names. And if there's something that would give away who the person is who wrote me the letter, I'll, I'll change her name. All right. Hi, Susan. This is, this is the writer. I'm going to call her Linda. And Linda has a very unusual last name. And that's always important when you're, when you're selected to be hot red. It's much easier to find your information if you have an unusual name. Hi, Susan. Let me put this over here so I can see it better. Hi, Susan. I wanted to write you concerning my experience with Thomas John. About a year and a half ago, which would be about 2019, beginning of 2019, I saw a feed on Facebook about a psychic who would be appearing at a local church in a few days. I'd been thinking of seeing a psychic to contact my son, Brad, who had passed away a few years ago earlier at the age of 30-ish. I drove myself in a snowstorm to the church. Once inside, I joined a long line of excited people waiting to file in. After a brief intro by local psychic Echo Bodine, Thomas John appeared. I was immediately struck by his apparent innocence and guilelessness. I can't even believe I'm reading that. He gave some readings to a few people that left everyone in the church breathless in their accuracy. It doesn't surprise me at all. After reading for a devastated mother of a 16-year-old girl who had died in a car accident, he said her spirit was speaking for another spirit who wanted to come through. It was my son, Brad. I raised my hand. Then Thomas said he was with a George. I gasped and began sobbing. He said that he passed quickly. And he did. He had passed quickly. He also said Ch uh, Brad had liked it here. I guess Brad over in heaven. He liked it here. They have food. And everybody starts laughing in the audience. And she mentions in her her um, message to me that her that Brad was quite overweight. 
I was sobbing so hard, now people were handing me tissues. I left that church in a state of absolute bliss. A few days later, after the initial euphoria, I began to process. I googled Thomas John. I wish more people would Google before they throw money at people. I found his criminal past, but when I found Operation Pizza Roll, I knew I had been had. I was very angry. I emailed both Thomas John and Echo Bodine. Echo's response was kind, and she hadn't heard of Operation Pizza Roll, but Thomas John's reply was bitter. I got a call a few days later from his assistant. That must have been Tracy. An older woman who had also lost a child. She felt bad. I felt bad for her as she obviously believed she could contact her dead son. I asked her if she'd seen the Operation Pizza Roll video. And she said, of course, but explained you were all atheists and, and so on. I didn't argue with her because I could not bear to remove her illusion that she could talk to her son. I'm sickened. He can prey on those of us who suffer with terrible pain. I thank you for all your efforts to expose him. Sincerely, Linda, unusual last name. Okay. So let's just pick up on a few points of that. So Echo Bodine had not heard of Operation Pizza Roll, even though the day after the article came out, she's already got a, a blog article about it. So something's wrong there in the timing. A lot actually is wrong there in the timing. And um, this thing with Tracy, oh my gosh. Oh, what do you say about her? Um, she had seen the Operation Pizza Roll article in the video because there was a video also that was very prominent. And she's the argument she makes, and I've seen this made so many times that, you should not take anything I say or any of the skeptics say seriously is because we're atheists. And for some reason, that means that we're not, you can't trust us. We don't believe in an afterlife. So I guess we're not, don't have anything to do with this and, and we're all liars or something. I, I don't get it, but whatever. Uh, um, so this is typical, the situation that she's talking to us about. And I want to point out that this is very, very similar to the video I did a couple of days ago. What do I do with his damn book? It's a woman writing from um, who attended one of these events in a church. Um, exactly the same kind of thing where, you know, you go in and Thomas John reads the audience and all these amazing hits come in and then afterwards they realized that they had they found out operation pizza roll exposed that he's hot reading people so this is this is typical and that's what really made me remember uh, um this this um echo bodine thing i did another video it's pb and j that I did about a month ago. And this is, like I said, this is 2023, um, October 11th, 2023. So there's another video on my channel called PB and J. And for a lot of people, they realize that means peanut butter and jelly. And it's very similar to what this woman is talking about. Linda's talking about her son, Brad, and that um, Thomas John trying i don't know trying to be funny or you know trying to get a laugh trying to break up the fact that it you know the mother's sobbing brings up these things that actually are quite cruel and he makes it out to be a joke but when you find out later that he's really not communicating with the dead and all he did is see the picture of um, brad and he makes this joke about his weight and he says it like he says brad really likes it over here because they have food and it's it's actually quite cruel and um i've seen and i've heard these kinds of statements out of his mouth multiple times at the time 
the person, the mother, usually it's the mother, is doesn't grasp that she's she's thinking they're really talking to their dead loved he's talking to their dead loved one and they don't grasp that um some people i in videos i've i've watched and i have videos of they're he says these things and the i don't know the mother i haven't talked to her later so i don't know how they feel about it and i don't know how they would feel about it knowing that it's a, a jab at their loved one that is Thomas John's opinion, not what the person on the other side is actually saying. It's this idea that um, Brad loves his mother, appears and says, you know, with Thomas John at this church and says, hey, it's okay, mom. You know, I, I can eat whatever I want over here and it's all right. It's it's just belittling and childish. It's not a. I know he's trying to be funny, but I personally don't think it's funny, and I think that in a lot of situations you wouldn't think it's funny. So in the video P B and J, the same kind of thing is happening, where he's making a joke at the expense of the person who's getting the reading, and they're not in on the joke. They don't understand that they're being. Hmm, marginalized they're being made fun of in a backhanded way they don't understand that but for me who's who knows what's going on around the outside what's actually happening it's quite cruel anyway so this story is just very similar to the other one that the what do i do with this darn book so i wrote to echo because this really kind of pissed me off all right so i wrote to her i I found her article that she had written, the one that I just showed you, and I left a comment underneath it. And it's one of those kinds of blogs that has to be approved before your comment will appear. And I think I might have been the first commenter. I can't even remember. So what I did is I posted the comment, made a screenshot of it, like I, I do almost everything. And I said, if it's approved, you know, I made a screenshot of my submission to go into her um, blog. and. Of course, if it's submitted and it goes in, then we know she saw it. But if it's denied and she responds, then we also know she saw it. So I was just kind of waiting to see what happens. It. And uh, I was just really curious: is she going to post my? Is she going to post my comment? And in the comment, I said that um, you know I didn't write the New York Times article, and I don't know you know why. Why won't you just name my name? why are you saying some woman why don't you just say my name it's it's mentioned in the article multiple times and i said i would have been fine with you using my name and i asked her if she'd read any of the other articles i've written and then about seatbelt psychic and i talked about you know some of the other work i've done and i said if you are a real psychic echo bodine how is it you can't tell that Thomas John is hot reading people. How, why are you endorsing this person if you're a real psychic? How can you not tell? And I, I ask that of people all the time. If you are really a psychic, then why can't you see this bad apple in amongst you? He's making everybody look bad. And that is true because um, I've heard kind of in the back ways that people are talking like uh, Matt Frazier and uh, Tyler Henry and John Edward and Char, Char Margolis said some pretty bad things about Thomas John, probably because of all the stuff I've been writing and work my team has been doing really makes the whole business look bad. And that's what John Oliver po um, posted. Yeah, I mean, not posted, he made a video on. So anyway um so she did read she did read my my submission i put on her blog she the blog she never posted it and she says um echo responds in an email she says i read my blog and there's nowhere that i say your name or accuse you of anything and why are you assuming that you think it was you <laughs> 
and uh, that totally missing totally right over her head right over her head because i was saying you can use my name i don't have a problem with that why why are you getting it so wrong why are you posting that anyway you probably got it of course it was me who how many other new york times articles out there are uh operation pizza roll anyway so i had written to her and i had explained to her you know that this was a dangerous and that that this man and that this woman linda had written to me and that um linda was really upset about what happened and why did echo endorse this man who was who was belittling her son and uh, making fun of him and on and on and on why is she endorsing this man so linda wrote to to echo to ask her these questions or and echo was just like well i don't know i didn't know anything about it so i told echo that i said you have you have this knowledge you've had this knowledge since you know the day after the new york times article came out and then you have this event with thomas john you get up on stage and you endorse him in front of all these other women at this church and you kn did that fully with the knowledge of the new york times article and that he had been caught and yet you still came into this and then when this woman comes to you linda and says oh my gosh what why would you do this echo why would you why would you endorse this man look what he did she's like oh i i don't know i didn't know anything about it well yeah we know she knew and she's just like oh you know he's just phenomenal of course he would have nobody would have done that so here's her last response to me she says I haven't worked with Thomas John in a couple of years. I love him dearly, and I have never seen a more gifted psychic. I'm sorry you feel the way that you do. I'm done with this conversation. And that's the last I heard from her. Now I'm done with this conversation. You know, we can't have her beliefs um, tangled with. Because, again, if she's endorsing Thomas John and she's a psychic medium, then your powers aren't so great, lady. If you think that, if you think that you can see and talk to the dead, and yet you've got this apple that is rotten in your mist, if mediumship is even real. I love him dearly, and I've never seen a more gifted psychic. Uh-huh. Well, if you've never seen a more gifted psychic, and we know, and she knew what he was like and what he was doing then what does that say about the whole industry if you've never seen a more gifted psychic so so lastly the last thing that happened is that i was talking to linda and you know we were having conversations back and forth and and um, linda was still upset that this had happened to her and you know she felt this euphoria at first and she was bawling to have um her husband and her son come through and then realize later, I mean, almost a few days later, what actually happened is um, it's, it's cool. So yeah, of course you feel this euphoria. You've had a good cry. Everybody around you is just loving on you, handing you Kleenex and everything is wonderful. And oh my gosh, my son is in contact with me. And then to find out that that was all not true that it was just some psychic medium who is having a good laugh at your expense and this other woman who's supposed to be the local uh, evidential medium who's supposed to be all this all that she's endorsing it and then when you approach her with the information she's like i don't know what you're talking about he's amazing you know sorry you had that experience and Echo's done with this conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's still around. So when I had a further conversation with, I asked her um, about her, how she booked the event. And she had posted on the Facebook event for the event. So, you know, Thomas John puts out a, hey, there's a, a event happening at this church in this place on this day. 
and she saw he was going to be there and she posted on the Facebook event page. So she, she put her name, Linda with the unusual last name. I, you know, I'm playing and being there. Now that's just like putting the keys in the lock of the door and putting a bunch of valuables in the key in the car and leaving it in a public place for somebody to just walk up, turn the key, open the door and take all your valuables. It's, it's like, hey, hello, putting arrows, look me up because she has the unusual last name. I know that's very likely that she's going to get looked up. Even still, even if she didn't have an unusual last name, because she put her Facebook page right there in front where you can't miss it on the event saying, I'm going to be there, it's easy. So, I mean, she could have put Donna Smith and it would have been looked up. That would have been simple. So, I talked to her and I said that um, I went and I did a Google search, just not even looking at Facebook with this woman, Linda's um, name, just a Google search. And within seconds, and I'm, I'm not kidding, seconds, I had her birth date and her parents' names, George and so on. So I had a lot of information. And then I put her Linda and her last name and then the word obituary and then I had Brad's obituary along with his photo, you know, showing that he was, he was um, a large man. And I had it within seconds. I, I wrote back to Linda and I said, everything Thomas Dunn told you and a lot more is out there. And I had all of that within five minutes. And I explained to her that there's a lot of information out there about you. You don't realize what's out there. And when you're trusting, when you trust this person, that you think that they're there to help you and to, um, you know, how how, do, how could they possibly take advantage of a woman who's grieving? How How could they possibly do that? You know, who would do something like that? A lot of people trust that that um, the person they're giving to money to, and they're validated by these other people they trust, like Echo. How could they possibly do this kind of awful thing? It didn't even occur to Linda. It didn't even not even occur until it was all over, and then she started to process it. And I'm really proud of her for doing that. Something inside of her, her her spidery sense or her tingly knowledge said something's not right something happened after a day or so after she started to think about it and she said i'm going to google this guy because something doesn't seem right and thankfully the new york times article was out and then a lot more was out about him because we just released it in droves whenever the new york times article came out we timed it so that lots of other things came out from a, um, an investigative wing of, of it, you know, it just, so that people could find this information. I, um, I really feel bad for Linda. Um, I'm proud and glad that I was able to help, but it feels awful it really does to know that she was in this very vulnerable time. I mean, she, she loves her son and he was taken quickly away from her. And um, because of the way he died, I'm sure there wasn't a lot of time. It was probably like a boom, boom, you know, and she probably didn't get to say goodbye. And because he was in his thirties, he's probably living on his own and, so she probably hadn't seen him for a few days. You know, just all these things run through my head about how awful this is. And especially when it's quick like this, the the parent or the family members can't really say goodbye. And I I just don't understand why people, no, I guess I do understand why people will, would take advantage of somebody like that. Very sad. But anyway, I hope you'll check out the other two videos that I think are kind of twinsies with this one. And that was PB and J.
And then the other one was, what do I do with this darn book? Um, I have a lot of, of stories like this um, and not always about Thomas John. He's just kind of the most egregious of them. And I have a lot more that I would love to tell over, over time. I don't, as I say, I don't have a schedule for this. I just, as I have time, um, I have a very busy October, November, and December, and January coming up. So I don't know how many videos I'm going to end up putting out. But I, I always appreciate your comments. Um, so leave me comments. And um, if you're so inclined, if you would like to subscribe, if you like learning about these kinds of things that are happening in the medium world, or you have questions, or if you have vid video or audio that you would like to share with me, please send it to me. My email is Susan Gerbic at Yahoo. No, Susan Gerbic at gmail.com. Um, and email doesn't take audio. You can't just upload your audio to email. That's not going to work. It's too big of a file, but you can email me or you can Facebook message me. And I'll walk you through how to get that video or that audio to me because there's ways of doing it. And I'm happy to show you how. Um, if you have anything else out there that you want to see or hear, or you have your own um, stories, please, please share them in the comments. I'd love hearing them. The gold standard though, is always to get audio at the minimum. If it's, if you're relying on your memory, if you're relying on your notes, then that's suspect and it's probably not um, accurate. Just take that with a grain of salt. That's, you know, standard. You need to be able to have the audio. So thank you out there, Linda. And that's not your real name. But thank you, Linda, for your, for your email. I really appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your story with me. And now I'm able to share that story beyond and let other people know. And um, I know there's a, probably a thousand more stories out there. If you want to share them with me, I'm happy to um, relate it, take your name out, change it as much as I can. So, it's, so only you know it's your story. So thank you all. It's great talking to you. And thank you so much for your support and your comments.